Welcome to Marketing in North America. My name is Gabriella and I'm your mentor for this session. I will be helping you regarding marketing in this region, the do's and don'ts, as well as some tips for you to start in the right path. Let's be honest here for a minute. Have you ever thought about the strategy, your marketing strategy for North America? If you did, that's awesome. And if you haven't, let's get started. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. Um, I'm Gabriela Latif, and I'm currently working at the Embassy of Indonesia, um, and I'm responsible for the bilateral economic relationship between Indonesia and Brazil. Previously, I worked at Latam Startups as a marketing manager, and I, I have advised over 100 companies that have passed through the programs, operating in various tech sectors and from all around the world. Um, and currently, I am a marketing advisor as well, and also a mentor for Latam Startups. Here are my marketing beliefs. I believe that understanding your audience is key to marketing. And I don't like marketers that rush companies into throwing a huge marketing investment with no data. I believe that the audience slash your target market is key to your business, knowing what they need and want and knowing their pain points and how you can solve their pain points are the key to creating a great foundation to both your marketing and also your business. And I don't like marketers that rush companies into throwing money into marketing without solid data is that simply you will be wasting your time and resources. And we never want that when it comes to a startup. So the big question is that, where do we start? Marketing has a lot of components and it is not as simple as it is in the surface. Therefore, I have separated um, the beginning of marketing in this new region into three. First of all, understanding your customers, um, which includes what are they actually looking for, choosing your marketing channels, picking the right channels for your business, and the key is to picking the right ones and not existing in all of them. Also, establishing your presence in the new market. Increase your um, brand awareness and start selling. Let's start off with understanding your customers. What are their pain points? And it is not about what you think or what you assume. It's about what they want and what they need from you. Here are some questions of what to look for when you're researching about your audience. What is your target market? Who are they? Are they males, females? What age are they? What are they interested in? And what hobbies do they have? These little questions are very important to figure out who exactly your target market is. The more detail you can get, the better. What are your target market's pain points? Sometimes when you're creating a product or a service, you think that it would solve one problem that might not be the biggest problem of what your target market has. So in this way, by knowing what exactly their pain points are, you can offer them exactly what they need. And also, what are they attracted to? For example, for a younger audience, they're more attracted to images, short videos. They're attracted to a certain type of content that might be different from Gen X, for example, or Baby Boomer. So um, these are some of the things that you should figure out and try to differentiate and use this to, to portray or communicate what your business is and what your products and services are. How can you reach out to them? So depending on the target market, they exist in different places. For example, some of them exist more in Facebook, some, ex some of them exist more in Pinterest, some of them exist more in TikTok. Who knows? So these are some of the basics that you should know in order to continue um, your marketing strategies or pursue or adapt to other marketing strategies. And also, not, it's not just about your clients, it's also to figure out who are your competitors. And a note there is that you always have competitors in the market. This is because 
there are so many companies out there and you should be aware of them in order to figure out how you can differentiate your, your business from theirs. By offering this differentiation, you create a competitive advantage that audience will pick you over them. And this is why um, it is sort of like that quote, um, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. I think this is also um, a good place to put that phrase in. And last but not least, don't assume. If you have some assumptions regarding a target market, ask them. It is better to ask and have proof rather than assume and to watch it crash and burn later on. And where to look for information regarding your market. Um, it, we are so glad that Canada has um, an initiative to be very transparent in their data and their information. Therefore, you can actually access some of these databases that are updated, such as the Canada's National Statistical Agency. You can find any industry there, any categories. Please go in there and play around and look for information. There's also the Government of Ontario and Government of Canada website as well to look for data. And for example, if you are in the mining industry, there are other official government websites that offers more data as well. So what I'm going to suggest when it comes to market research is to play around and actually take time to dig into the information and also to ask your target market what they need and what they want. However, there's another session in market research. So I will keep this part short and I will dive into the marketing more. Now, the second step is exploring the different platforms. It's about choosing the right platforms and invest your time and resources to what actually matters. Fun fact, 98% of social media users are also on other platforms, which means that if a majority of your target market was is, are, is already in one of the social media platforms, you don't need to exist in the other one because by being there, you're already targeting this audience. In this way, I'm not saying that you can't exist in all of them. What I'm saying is that you can focus your efforts and resources in the platforms that matter the most first and which are more efficient to attract and talk to your target market. Let's dive into each of the uh, social platforms that are heavily used in North America. The first one is LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is your online first impression. Depending on your home country, sometimes LinkedIn are, is used just for a Facebook or just simply making one, but never making it active or it, because it's just simply not as important as it is back in your home country. However, it is very important for you to have a LinkedIn profile in North America, especially when you are dealing um, with B2B or having just a personal LinkedIn profile. What I'm saying with personal LinkedIn profile is a professional LinkedIn profile. So LinkedIn is not something that you share your life um, and your deepest feelings or secrets in there. However, you're sharing your professional and your business content on LinkedIn. And in North America, the first place that they're going to find about your business or figure out about your business is your website and second, your LinkedIn. So you have to have your personal LinkedIn and your company LinkedIn ready as soon as possible. So as I was saying, LinkedIn is specifically designed for career and business professionals to connect it shows professionalism uh, it, and it is, uh, it is important to create as soon as possible. And some of the people ask me, what should I put as a background photo? Please do not put your background photo of you at the beach sipping drinks. Please put something related to your company or brand or even your industry. And in the LinkedIn, there will be a a section for your summary. And there, please put one to three sentences per paragraph and a maximum of two paragraphs about your professional biography, basically. Because if you put more than that, people are not gonna read it. 
create a profile page for the business separately from personal profile because the nature of the content between your personal profile and business profile would be a bit different. And the fact that having a business profile looks more professional in a way later on where people discover your business and they just want to know about the business and not really yourself at the beginning. So it is better to have them separate. And of course, have clear and concise content. In North America, the way that people communicate, whether it is in business or in personal life, they tend to get straight to the point. And therefore, it is better to keep things very clear and concise. It is not rude to keep, keep things very short. However, um, you want to, they, they do not want to spend a lot of time circling around a point, but they want it very direct. And the best time to post on LinkedIn is before 9 a.m. on weekdays. The next is Facebook. Facebook is about creating communities and it is strongest, um, the strongest platform, I believe, for communities. So Facebook is originally con created to connect uh, and share photos with family and friends online. And until now, it is still the number one social network worldwide in terms of users. And it supports group pages, fan pages, business pages that let businesses use Facebook as a medium for social media marketing. And they offer ads as well. For example, if you want to put ads about your business on Facebook, it is also a very great tool to do that. Also, there's Facebook Marketplace, which is a place where you can sell your products and services through the platform. And there has been an increasing um, users for Facebook Marketplace right now. And also a good thing about Facebook is that they offer live streaming services. And the best time to post um, is between one, uh, 12 to 1 p.m. on weekdays. These are my suggestions based on the experience that I have with Facebook. But again, when I mentioned about the best time to post, it is generally the best time to post. However, some industries, you might see a different, uh, another time that is more efficient to reach out to these audiences. So this is a part of the marketing that you have to see on um, the interactions about what time they interact with you the most, what time are the impression, how many impressions you get at a certain time. So these are just my suggestion. However, later on, as you gain more audience and more data throughout all the social media platforms, really, you will be able to find the optimal time to post on those different platforms. And next, we are talking about Instagram, your brand in pictures. It is made for sharing photos and videos. However, how does it work for a business? It can create a real connection with your audience in a way that you can create stories, you can create videos, you can create photos. So these audience, your target market can get a clear view or like an inside view on how your business works and make them feel more connected to you and get to know you better. Grab the audience's attention better than words. Picture speaks a thousand words. And it also allows you to visually represent your brand is in an aspirational manner. And what is very trending right now as well is short videos and Instagram has Instagram reels for it. So it is great for creating buzz through short videos as well. And also a very fun fact, Instagram has the highest user growth rate, much more than Facebook right now. And it is going to go, go up. So, Right now, Facebook might be the number one platform, but in the future, who knows? Instagram might be a very good competitor to Facebook in that aspect. And the best time to post is 12 to 1 p.m. on weekdays as well. Next, Twitter. Join the conversation. Twitter is an online news and networking site, and it's also a microblogging platform. What's good about Twitter is that it's that it's instantaneous conversation with your target market. You want to tweet it, you want to say, it, you post it. And it is best for updates, service responses, or receiving slash giving feedback. For example, if you're, you're offering 
a service and your service is down, unfortunately, people can tweet at you and, and say, hey, your, your, um, your service is down, what do I do? Hey, I am having trouble with this type of service, what do I do? And with Twitter, you can answer this very easily. And I think this is one of the advantages of Twitter. It's that fast response. But when you go on Twitter, it might be a bit more high maintenance and um, uses more of your time in a way that if someone tweets at you saying, I need help, they expect you to reply fast, especially on Twitter. So this is why I think it is more time consuming and you have to put more effort into Twitter. However, when you can create a buzz, you can create a conversation in Twitter that people can easily join, this can be a very good platform for you. And as I was saying, it requires more attention and usually a company would put six to eight tweets a day um, to give more information or updates regarding the company or what is going on in the industry. And also in Twitter, hashtags is going to be key as it is how the algorithm will see what you are talking about. And best time to post for Twitter is weekday at peak hours, eight to two, six to eight, lunchtime, dinner time, those times when people are relaxing and they're looking at their phones. Now I'm going to talk about the different the distinct stems of social platforms, like how are they different and what are they used for? So based on the percentage of each platform's monthly visitors who mainly use the platform for the following. Let's see Facebook and Messenger here first. So Facebook and Messenger is still used for messaging family and friends to post and share pictures of photos and videos and also to keep up to date with the news slash the world. And it can also be used to keep updated for your business. So Facebook is really good at that as well. If you can create a community in Facebook and put updates about your company or the industry there, you can create a pretty big community, which is very good. Second, let's take a look at Pinterest here. Pinterest is to follow or find information about products or brands find funny slash entertaining content, post or share photos or videos. What the first thing that came to my mind is that there was a company that works uh, that makes wedding platforms. And of course, Pinterest would be a very good idea for them because they could post um, the wedding venues and all the other things, images and videos on Pinterest. And that is where it's um, their target market is located. So not all of the businesses, especially in tech, um, uses Pinterest because of the nature of Pinterest, of how it is. However, again, you have to figure out what industry your business is in and where your audience is located. And then you can choose amongst these platforms and create content based on that. Next, it's LinkedIn. Keep up to date with the news slash the world follow, find information about products or brands. As I was saying, if you're a new brand in the market, they want to figure out who you are, they go to your website and also your LinkedIn to make sure that you're legitimate. Unfortunately, there are fake businesses out there. So they want to see that, uh, that you are credible. And by having that, by having LinkedIn and a website, a good LinkedIn and a website, um, they will be able to have trust in your companies and having trust in a business nowadays is a bit hard to get because of the nature of online businesses. It is easier to say if you're dealing face to face about trust. However, online, you have to keep things professional and credible for them to trust you. And of course, to reach out to your buy your services or products. Next, there is Snapchat. Again, it's a very, Snapchat is a bit more niche as such, um, I think because it's more personal about sharing photos and videos. Um, and it's more about friends and family. Next, there's Instagram. To post or share photos or videos, find funny slash entertaining content, 
follow slash find information about products or brands. Um, for example, um, there's actually a, a current trend is that people right now don't really want to know about your business, but they do want to know about the industry. So it is good not to talk about your business all the time. For example, imagine if someone comes up to you and just offers you their products all the time, you would probably block them or be like, hey, I'm not interested, please go away. So it is the same thing online. You can't just approach a person and say, hey, buy my products. Like, why should I buy your products? First of all, who are you and why should I buy from you? And why should I buy from you? Like, what problem are you solving? How are you helping me? So this is a very important point is that when you communicate about your business, when you communicate about your products or services, you have to make sure that it is relevant to them and it solves something of their needs or, or their problems. And people nowadays, they don't want to read serious stuff because um, this is a very um, um, interesting trend that happened during this uh, pandemic, let's say is that people would like to read more easy reading stuffs and not that serious stuffs on the internet. So for example, it used to be that businesses have a very serious tone in their businesses. However, nowadays, depending on the target market as well, of course, some of them might have a bit of a humor in, a bit of a more casual tone in talking to them. And this is how they interact and they can relate with the customers more. So again, think about all these possibilities and, and all the different types of content that's going to resonate most and attract most your target audience. Okay, next, North America is very fond of this, Reddit. It is to find funny slash entertaining content, keep up to date with the news and world, follow or find information about products and brands. However, Reddit is not your usual social media platform. Reddit is more of a forum so people can give their opinions there people can find information there you can find information on basically anything in the world there and it's also available in different languages next there is TikTok, the very fast growing platform nowadays and it is very popular amongst the young if i should if i should say the vibe of TikTok. It's just simply young. You find funny and entertaining content to share photos or videos, keep up to date with the news and world. What's best about TikTok is are the short videos. Because of the short durations, people are getting more and more creative. People are, and you can portray this information in a short period of time, which is perfect because nowadays with the increased use of social media and with more content on social medias, um, people have less attention span when it comes to reading things or watching things. So keeping things short and concise and easy to deliver and easy to understand would be key, I think, in all of the social media platforms. And this is why TikTok is booming right now. Next, it's about Twitter and it's also to keep up, keep up to date with the news and world because of the fast update on news find funny and entertaining content and follow or find information about products or brands. As you can see here, it seems like finding funny and entertaining content has been a pattern in all, almost all of the social media pattern, uh, platforms. And this is why balancing educational content and humor slash something more lighthearted will be important essence in how you create your brand voice into communicate with the audience efficiently. Next, why social media? If you need more convincing on why you should be on social media, these are why. About brand discovery, uh, as you can see here, the percentages of people finding new brands um, in, all, in social media is 47% of all internet users. So imagine half of your target market, half of the population is looking into social media for more information or to discover new brand. Uh, sorry, for brand discovery, to discover new brand. Well, I think it's very much worth 
diving into and investing your time and resources into social media because clearly that is where they are at. And there's also another percentage here in white that, about Gen X and boomers. And 41% of Gen X and boomers discover new brands on social media. And what is fun about this is that Gen X and boomers right now, they are the biggest spenders on social commerce, social e-commerce, and also through social media. So in the beginning of the pandemic, it seems like all online purchases and social commerce is just going up. And this is true for all types of demographies, all demography. However, what is consistent right now, and it seems to be increasing in the future, is the fact that the Gen X and boomers are going to purchase more and more things online, more than any other, more than Gen Zs, more than millennials. And this is very important to note because if you are not considering Gen X and boomers thinking that they are not as tech savvy, you are wrong in that part. So if your marketing strategy or your idea does not include them in the beginning, it might be worth taking a look into because they have the money and they have the willingness to purchase online. And also 28% of all internet users discover brand from ads on social media and also 24% from recommendations or comments on social media. And also updates on 17% uh, from updates on brands social media pages. So these numbers, I think, already says a lot about how people discover new brands. And this is when you are entering a new market, this is going to be very important. Of course, still the biggest brand discovery would be from word of mouth. Therefore, and I don't think that is going, that is never going to change. Word of mouth is still more trustworthy and much more effective than social media. However, in these days, with the increase of um, social use and online purchases, it is definitely worth diving into social media for brand discovery. For brand research, percentage who mainly use the following when looking for more information on brands, 45% of the population turn to social networks when it comes to researching about a brand whether it is for credibility, whether it is for just looking at how the visual, the product looks like, because this visual of the product is very important because since you're buying it online, you want to know how it actually looks like. So Instagram with being the visual repre representation of your business or your product or your services, they will, they will definitely dive into there. And it doesn't matter which social media platform you're in. For example, if you're B2C, they will go into your Instagram. They will look into your Facebook. They will look into your Twitter even. But for example, for B2B, LinkedIn will be the best platform for B2B. They want to see if your company is legit. They want to see if you or the other co-founders or your of the members of your business have the knowledge and the expertise to help them with that. And this is the way you tell them, hey, you can trust us and you can hire or buy our products or services. Next, consumer reviews. It is the online word of mouth. And it is important for you to have positive consumer reviews because one bad review could affect first the algorithm on social media the algorithm on the internet, for example, on the website. And when you Google and then you have bad consumer reviews, they're just going to be, okay, I'm not going to choose this business. I'm going to choose the other one. And these people have the alternatives to go to other businesses. It's, it's not that if you don't want to buy my products or services, if you don't want to hire us, that is fine. That is not the way because you want to have repeat customers. And remember, word of mouth is the strongest aspect, strongest marketing basically that exists out there. So you want to make sure that your customers have a great customer experience in general, and also great 
satisfaction in your products or services. Also, there's also question and answer sites. This can include Reddit, this can include Google reviews or Google, um, all these um, places where they can que question answered. For example, also Amazon that has a Q&A section, for example. So these are the places that they will be looking at. And there are forums and me message boards, 17% of them, as I was saying, Reddit as well. And also, there's also messaging slash live chat services such as Facebook, um, Facebook chat for businesses. WhatsApp can be in there as well. However, in North America, WhatsApp is not used as much. That is why I believe it is at 16%. And online pin boards such as Pinterest at 11%. So in conclusion, social networks at 45% will be very important for them to say, okay, I will give this business a chance and I want to try them. Where is your audience? Next, weekly uses of social media. So as you can see, Facebook is still the number one platform in dark blue for all internet users. However, for Gen Z, there's a bit of a reverse. Instagram is the most popular platform for Gen Z. Next, millennials. Millennials are still using Facebook as their main platform. However, they're also using Instagram a lot. And if you can take a look at Gen Z and boomers there, they're on Facebook and they're still on Instagram as well. However, not as much. And as you can see that there on the left and in descending order, you can see the popularity of the social media platforms and between all the ages. LinkedIn is third from the last in this list because simply the fact that it is more of a professional platform and not a personal a friends and family relationship kind of platform, but instead it's more of a career um, professional aspect. However, as you can see there, it's um, all internet users seems to have a consistent number of people on LinkedIn. The social, com the social commerce. Alongside Facebook, TikTok and Instagram users come out on top when it comes to following brands and seeking information about products on social media. So as you can see here, the top channels for clicking on sponsored or promoted posts. So here are the ads. Um, how, what are the chances of people picking your ads on these platforms? So as you can see, if you put an ad on Instagram, it seems to be that people um, swipe up or click on your sponsored post a lot, most on Instagram and then next, next on Facebook and third on TikTok. However, as you can see there, TikTok are only for select markets. There comes Reddit and next comes LinkedIn. And so LinkedIn is not bound to any market really. Therefore, it is a good idea for B2B ads as well in LinkedIn. Next, after you pick your platform and you know you know your audience, you pick your platforms, what do you do next? It's about establishing your presence and let the people know about you. It's about increasing the brand awareness and getting their attention. That is important. Marketing the startup. First things first, you have to have your website ready and you also have to have the website in English. Since you are catering to the North American market, it only makes sense that you have an English version of your website. Second, create LinkedIn profile, your personal LinkedIn profile and also your business LinkedIn profile. Next, have all content in English. So for example, if you have your business back home and it is in Spanish, for example, it is worth looking into translating the post or translating the content or creating a new content because the market is different from back home and it is in North America. So there, there has to be some changes. So you can put dual languages into your post. For example, you can say it in English and in Spanish, or you can post at different times in Spanish and English. However, you have to have content in English. If not, people will not be able to know who you are. 
yes, Google Translate exists, but it is not perfect. And what are the chances that people actually go to your page and translate it? So you don't want them to do all the work. You want them to communicate. The, you want them to. You want to communicate with them directly. And this is why English is very important in this market. And to make to make sure you have professional picture and content on your LinkedIn. So for your LinkedIn, please have a very professional business photo and not a personal picture. This, this is to show professionalism and for people to believe in you. And if they don't believe in you, they don't believe in your business and they would not want to do business with you. And for the content, make um, what I was saying about professional content is that make sure there's no typos, use the right grammar, use the right language um, and tone for that. And as well as create social media accounts, personal and business. Uh, just a quick note there, you, for example, if you decide to make a business Instagram account and you want to have a personal link Instagram account, what I'm saying about a personal Instagram account is your professional Instagram account if you would like to make it. So uh, make sure to have appropriate content there and nothing too personal or very close to your personal life, but have a pr professional profile in which they can relate to you more. They can see who are the people behind the business. That is also another good strategy in order for people to believe in you and believe in your business. Next, what content should I put? This is a very interesting question because there are so many contents you can put out, but there are only certain types of contents that your target market would love. And first of all, it's about quality, not quantity. So think about it this way. It is better for you to grow organically on social media. It is a good way for you not to spend money on ads or anything to invest to get followers or get people to notice you. But how, how do you get their attention? You create content that is retweetable. You put a content that is very much shareable that they can repost, that they like, that it is automatically a free marketing for you because they like it and they share it. That is the most important thing. If you have, for example, it is better to release one good content than to release five that does not resonate with them and th that they don't care at all. So it is better for you to release one, but a very good one. Okay. so. Here's one of the tips that I can give in terms of what to create for content. You have competitors in the market and some of them might be way more established than you are. So this is how it goes. You imitate. Check out what and how the, your competitors are doing online. For example, you have a competitor, uh, let's say competitor, the company X. You don't imitate company X, you imitate who company X follows. So for example, if you are, let's just say it this way, company X follows Apple. You imitate Apple's social media or slash marketing strategies and adapt it to yours. And this is how you know you can, you can make a very good marketing strategy based on that. So imitate. Don't copy exactly because it might not work for you because of the differentiations, the nature of your business and all that. However, imitate those market leaders that are in the industry, in your industry. Next, start posting. Don't be scared. Propose a campaign with a conservative schedule. So what I'm saying is that you don't need to post every day, for example, on LinkedIn. You can post every two days. You can post every three days and that is okay. However, you have to be consistent in when you post it. If you commit to three days, every three days, then you do it every three days in the exact same time. I'm going to post Monday. Okay, Monday at 12 p.m., Monday, 12 p.m. And then next, Thursday, 12 p.m., Thursday, 12 p.m. And you repeat this over and over again. And with the right hashtags, right and relevant hashtags about your industry or your products and services, and what's the reason about the hashtags and the consistency in posting is that in these social media platforms, they will see 
this consistency of the timing as, oh, they post really often, therefore I will show more of you to the audiences. And which audience do they show this to? That is going to depend on the hashtag. For example, if you're in mining, put mining Canada, mining US, mining North America. If you put it there, they, will, they automatically know that your audience is about your about mining. So they will they will um, the social media platforms will see, hey, you're active and your audience is this, therefore I will show more of you to your audience. And that is how simply uh, that is simply how the algorithm works. Um, okay, next, use images in short videos in posts because again, so people love to see pictures and videos and it grabs their attention more than just plain words. Again, um, ah, use social media management tools such as Hootsuite. Really guys, this is a life savior. What is a social media management tool? You can schedule a post. For example, if I want to post at 12 p.m. tomorrow on LinkedIn, I don't have to sit in front of my computer at 12 p.m. and press post. No, this is not needed. Um, what you can do is you can jump on platforms such as Hootsuite, you can schedule your post and it's automatically going to send it out there. As I'm saying, a lifesaver. And you can schedule more than 10 posts like on, you can schedule for the next week, you can schedule for the next two weeks. As long as you have the content, this is going to make your life easier. And what is good about Hootsuite itself is also if someone mentions you on any social platforms, you can see it in one of, um, in their basically their feed and you can monitor the mentions about your brand. You can see about the buzz and if they talk about your brand also in Hootsuite. So you can hear the chatter and understand your audience better. Next, there are also blogs, white papers, and case studies. Why is this, why am I saying this is part of the content? It is because simply that North Americans, they love to read. And they, do, they don't just read a short post. They love to read blogs. They love to read articles. They love to read white papers. They love to read case studies. So for example, if you are a new business in a new market, people might not know about you. So what you can do is that if you have your business back home, you can make a case study about um, your product or your service and how it is used. And then you can post it in later on your English website, for example, or in your social media platforms for people to read about, okay, how can I adopt your services or your product? in my business. And this is one of the examples how. And it's also to be credibility and also interest. So you can explain your business better to them and about how you can help them solve their problem. Next up is common marketing mistakes that you can avoid and you should avoid. First of all, leaving marketing for later stages. As I was saying in the beginning, in the introduction, is that if you haven't thought about your marketing strategy, you should start now. Why? Making a brand presence takes time. You won't be famous in just a day. You can, but what are the chances really? Let's be honest here. Make sure that you have your audience ready before you launch. When you're moving into a new market, you want to create the buzz surrounding your brand, the buzz surrounding your products and businesses. Because if you leave the marketing for later stages, you have your product ready, it's perfect. You want to sell it. You have no one to sell it to. No one is ready to purchase your product. And then you, you try to figure out the marketing, you do all the marketing. However, wouldn't it be nice that when your product is ready, people are ready to buy your products? Just like that? I mean, I like that better. Receiving more, receiving revenue as soon as possible sounds like a very good idea for a startup. So it is good to work on the marketing at the same time as you are developing your product and your market research and all that. So not to waste time in getting some money. Next, next mistake is not having an English website. 
As I was saying, to cater to the North American market, make sure the audience can understand what you're offering. Next, not understanding your audience. What are their pain points and how can you solve them? If you are talking about your product, but it does not solve their pain points, then they wouldn't buy your product, no matter how good it is. Next, the phrase, this is how we have always done it. Entering a new market includes making adjustments to your business, such as business plan, marketing, a lot of aspects of your business, really. And once you say, this is how we have always done it, it means that you are reluctant to adapt to the new market and reluctant to listen to what your audience or what your target market is saying. And this hinders your progress in the new market very much. So you have to be open-minded about the differences between your home country or where uh, other countries or regions that you have done your business in. However, the North American market is definitely different than other markets. So you have to be willing to adapt to that. Next, not knowing how to leverage social. Just existing in the social media is not enough. Social media is a powerful tool that when being leveraged can be very beneficial for you. Everybody can exist on social, but not everybody can play the game and be successful in social. That is going to be the differentiation. Not testing. Don't be afraid to think, test things out and play around. Assumptions will not help your company in any way. When in doubt, just simply ask your customers, what do you think? What can I improve? What do you think about this? What can I, how can we do better in this aspect or that aspect? So here comes the marketing tips to close things off. First, create and update your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is widely used in North America as the first point of contact in the professional scene. You can also find leads easily and connect to people in your area slash industry. So this is going to be very important when it's doing business um, online. Second, which social media platforms are for you? You don't need to be present in all social medias, just the ones that suit your business the best. Learn about how to use the platforms, its algorithms, and how to find your audience there. And different social media platforms have different algorithms and how to find your audience there. So therefore, if you would love to know more in depth about um, these algorithms and just social media, how to play the game really, um, I have my contact info in the next slide and you can, please feel free to ask me about that. I, I will be uh, glad to help you and your business particularly in what to do. Third, be involved in the community. Canadians and, no and Americans are very open to hearing your ideas and give their opinion and help. Don't hesitate to politely reach out to them. Be active in events will help you increase awareness as well. So when you reach out to the North Americans saying, hey, I need your advice on this. Uh, can I ask you to be in a focus group because I want to know more about my product and how I can improve it. They're much more than willing to actually help you out in terms of that with no cost whatsoever. And they're not asking for anything in return. So when you have a product, don't be shy, ask them about it. Like, how can I improve better? And when you listen to your target market, it can only be, uh, it can only bring you good things. And that is the end of my presentation. And I hope you find this presentation insightful. And here's my contact, my email address and my LinkedIn. And also you can book your free marketing session with me. And I will talk to you about how, how to market your business in North America, what steps to take. And also uh, it will be more tailored to your industry. I would love to know more about you guys. So if you can point your phone there to the QR code, it will lead you to a calendar, you can just book for free. And I would love to talk to you about strategy. And if you'd like as well, there's the link to book the session below. And I hope to see you soon. And if you have any questions as well, shoot me a message. You can send me an email as well. And thank you very much. And I'm very excited for you to start your journey in North America.